Manchester United 4, Aston Villa 2. The worst first half and a pretty decent second half in one of the oddest games I've ever seen. What were your thoughts on that? Well, forget the first half, nothing happened. What happened in that second half? Yeah, I, I just let my own review. I, I ended up waffling. I, I do, right? And one of the things I waffled was it wasn't a high... Like, we've seen some genuinely, like, very, very high-level... Premier League football in recent years and as I mentioned on the stream a lot of them involve City sadly right mm. this was not one of those games this was like 14th plays 11th in the championship the, the amount of mistakes made mm. by both teams the amount of wastefulness the, amount, the state of some of the tackles like this was literally like an advert for fucking Sheffield Wednesday against Kim, I don't know just someone yeah. else gash yeah, Barnsley it didn't really make no, sense, did it? No. No, it was rubbish. And like, I'm putting weekend down to tired legs in a big yeah. way, right? I think tired legs had a massive impact. There'd been so many games, a little bit of rotation tonight, happy days. But I'm now thinking tonight and probably Sunday, there's going to be a little bit of I'm not getting injured this, this fucking close to Qatar itis. Mm. It's a weird one, isn't it? I was just thinking, watching the game today, thinking in 10 days there is World Cup matches and we've still got another game. Like, none of this makes sense. Also, I just realised after this game, United have been drawn against Burnley for, for the game week, starting the day after the World Cup final. We might play Burnley one day after the World Cup final. Like, none of this makes sense. None of this works. We'll come back to some of that stuff in a minute, but let's just talk straight about Garnacho because I thought this was a performance tonight from him where, because he, to me, he's already done more in a Man United shirt than Donny van der Beek. He has come on and changed the game for the better for Man United. He's taken a stagnant game and made it exciting. And he's got his assists. He's gone at people. He's tried to win the game. And we've won the game largely because of his good work. That was an excellent performance from him, won it off the bench. Yeah, he's direct, he's brave. I just, I like all the attributes out of him. And it's not necessarily that he's guaranteed to succeed. None of them are. Even after three good appearances, we've, we've seen Makeda go off the boil from this. He has to have the attitude to continually work. He has to have the attitude to keep trying things and it has to keep being brave on the pitch. I think that's the one definite thing about him. He don't give a fuck. No. Um, and and not, he might not give a fuck to the extent where he's also being a dickhead in training at times. And he's got to get the balance right of being edgy where you're capable of the unpredictable on the field. But can you turn up for training most days and, and put the, the shift in? Because yeah. that's where I get the impression that he's... I think he's a throwback, mate. I think he's a, I think he's a player from another era in the sort of like his attitude to training sort of sense mm. from what you've seen, what we saw on tour, what Bruno's kind of alluded to, some of the stuff that's come out since. You're kind of like, yeah, this guy is different. And that <laughs> might be a great, like Cantona was different. Mm. They said Cantona wouldn't work. And people are going to be like, as if you compare some kid with three games to Cantona. Oh, we're just talking, these different personalities and teams. If they were all mm. Michael Owens, you'd never watch a fucking football game in your life no. because it'd be dull as dishwater. You need those flavours. The Paolo Di Canios, the Cantonas, these are the fuckers that make you tune in. Garnacho is a player based on three games I'm going to tune in for. Mm. And that's what you want. He's effective and he's exciting and he might be not roofed in right. And I love mm. that. Yeah, I love that as well. The, the amount of questionable tattoos. He's got one sleeve that's just entirely prison break. Now, that is the sort of player I want at Manchester United, we think. Yeah, and he had it at 17. Yeah, he's, had, he's had it for ages. Straight off the bat, you're like, you know, you fucking sorted that out. Yeah, exactly. I don't know where he got that done, but it's very highly detailed. Um, Bruno Fernandes is another one. Goal and assist tonight. That's his sort of, that was his 2020 bread and butter, wasn't it? That goal and assist game where he's just putting up numbers. I thought he looked much better when he came in um, and to that sort of central position as well after Donny went off but a decent game from him as well wasn't it yeah and those two players bracketing Donny van der Beek in the centre I think says a lot without saying it mm. all of the people that are saying well uh, you know Donny could do what Bruno's doing Donny could do what Bruno's doing well we missed Bruno at the weekend and he didn't and then Bruno was shunted out to the side to accommodate him tonight probably a little bit of both actually but you know 
they've both been in the same team tonight. He's done nothing. One of the things that we had in the first half was control, was the territory, but we had no spark. Mm. Bruno comes central, the game comes alive. Yes, it was at the same time uh, Garnacho was entered the fray as well. But the arguments that get trotted out in defence of Danny van der Beek is, well, he's not got enough minutes. How do you expect him to be sharp? Listen, mate, Garnacho was sat on ice mm. and he's never played men's football. And they're like, right, come here, fucker. You're starting in the Europa League in a game that we need to win. Um, and then it's all right. We're starting. You're starting away at Villa Park, one of the craziest atmospheres in the league. And now, yes, okay, League Cup at home. That is the kind of game you would expect him to mm. feature in. But you're seeing him come in and do bits. He's getting assists. He's getting goals. Donny van der Beek, what? Like, I mentioned this before as well. I don't see him necessarily doing things wrong. But I don't see him doing anything right. Mm. I don't know if he you saw, but do he had 11 touches in the first half, Donny van der Beek, as our number 10. In a, in a, I think we had 58% uh, possession and our number 10 had 11 touches. That is that is the definition of not doing anything, isn't it? Um, Marcus Rashford, I think that finish he put in today was a massively underrated, highly difficult couple of shimmies, a step over. I thought that was a really good finish by him. Getting it past Mings mm. and then that other, the second player, I don't know who it was, who came to slide tackle in or the other way around um, and doing this sort of step over so that if he goes in for the slide tackle, he wins a penalty. I thought that was really good uh, sort of centre forward play from Rashford. Yeah, I thought Marcus looked more energetic coming into this season. And the performances weren't quite well rounded at the start of the season. He's kind of slowly, like, peeled himself back to where he was. I think mm -hmm. you know, he's sort of like each week, sort of being a bit braver and a bit more effective and a bit more dynamic. And I, I could go and probably say that that was his. Like at times, he was gritty. Mm. Um, he there was quality to what he was doing. There was the shot that he missed for me is worth talking about because he hit that fucker so hard. Mm. Like, that's a player with serious confidence to hit that as hard as he's hit it. He also had the one that was deflected, which went looped and just dropped at the side of the um, of the goal. Like, he was involved in everything tonight. You know, um, he had the offside call as well. Like, there was so much that he was doing in a real positive sense. I think he'll go to the World Cup and do bits for England um, just based on watching him tonight yeah but i think his season has kind of slowly been coming to the boil a little bit and it might have needed all of this three four months that he's had now because he was so bad last year yeah like there was question marks i mean like i am literally driving the marcus uh rashford fan club round, but i thought i don't know if he's ever going to regain this after the way last season went yeah but he looks like he, i'm not saying he's there yet i'm not i don't think he is i think he's still with any player any player can put in one good game but I think Marcus is slowly building on previous good games mm. and I think he'll take it to another level and then can he maintain that level like, a bit like Bruno Bruno's showing signs of getting back to that guy we saw in the first season it's not every single game every single week but we're seeing those games more mm. often than not now from him and even if he's not contributing a goal or an assist you know, he had 90 odd percent passes the other night and like eight fucking chances created. You're like, mm. Jesus Christ, don't talk to me about you know, what does Bruno bring? Do you watch the games? Yeah, so yeah, I'm, I'm buzzing for Marcus. Um, I hope he goes and enjoys himself at the World Cup. Um, and I think it's that sort of dynamic kind of player that'll do bits for club and country. Mm. Um, and looking forward then Burnley's the, the draw at Old Trafford in the next round Vincent Company coming back to Old Trafford Are you excited to see Vincent Company do the ice cold Steven Gerrard turn to look at the crowd that lasted about what 60, 16 minutes until we beat him and also how long did it last at Villa six months Ooh, Gerrard Gerrard yeah Vincent Company was it did about 100 games I don't know it wasn't long no, he didn't do two years there. Did he? Surely Stephen Gerrard didn't do two years at Aston Villa. No, I don't think it was two years. But I think it's longer than you think it was. How many games do you reckon it was? 60. Yeah, 40. It was less than I thought. 40? Yeah, that's one season. He was shit. Do you think Vincent Company is going to um, walk down the touchline and look at the crowd? 193 at Rangers. Yeah, that's better. Go back there. What are you thinking then? Burnley versus Manchester United. 
I'm gonna be. I haven't really watched a lot of Burnley this year. I don't That's know. That's a dude disgrace. Getting along with them. Unbelievable. I'll tell you how he's getting along with them. He's doing. Where are we? Here? <laughs> no, no, no. This is off the top of my head. Top of the league, mate. Top of the championship. At the top of the league. Yeah. Fair play. Yeah. Well, they're going to come at it fairly strong because they they're getting a two week break the championship for like most of the group games. I, I am, you know, with, without dis, you know, disparaging the uh, the championship, championship players are going to be going to the World Cup. I don't know how many. I think it's ninety three mm. from the Premier League going. Um, but there will be championship players go. Most of them will be back after two weeks, I'm sure. Mm. So most teams are going to get pretty much back into the swing of things. So they're going to be, what, three week fresh? Three mm. week of playing competitive football. <laughs> Manchester United are probably going to have most players get to the knockout, I would say, at least. Yeah. But then on the other hand of and that, got- could you maybe say that United are going to have their players, maybe not for United, playing competitive matches more, you know, throughout the whole thing, whereas Burnley will have, you know, they've been training, they've been having friendlies, but it's not quite the same. Maybe you could look at it the other way and say United plays a bit oh, more they're going to have three, in, before our game, they will have three weeks of matches. They're only having two week off. Okay. So they will have, th- they, they might not even, like, they might just not have games, but they might keep training. Right, fair so enough. So they'll, they'll be in, they'll be in sound shape. Yeah. No, I, and, and actually the players that do go on a distance for United, I'm not expecting them back even for Forest. No. So I, I think that they'll miss that game and Forest and then be back for like New Year's Day, mm. something along that. So um, what you might see is, now you can probably still put together a good side. Tony Marshall, um, Lindelof's not going, is it? Sweden didn't qualify, nope. did they? No. So you've got Tony Marshall, you've got Lindelof, you're going to have the likes of Iqbal and mm-hmm. uh, Garnacho and Sancho. Alanga. Yeah, so you, you can put together... A, a, a team that you're not asked about putting in the League Cup, let's say. Mm. But do, does the does the, the League Cup not, like not said, matter I'm to you? I'm very interested to see. You what? Does the League Cup not matter to you? Are you not particularly bothered? Because I think it's a good chance to win a trophy, to be honest. I agree with that, yeah. And I, I'm not... Someone mentioned this on, on one of my comments the other day and they said, I'm not all about this, that thinking we're too cool for certain trophies. I, I don't think we're too cool for certain trophies. I was at Wembley when we last won the, the League Cup. Mm. But when I look at, we've got this extra round in the Europa League. Yeah. We have got a hell of a task on our hands to make sure we finish inside the top four in the Premier League. You can't do everything. So you're going to have to drop something. Yeah. And I I think the league, like, if Ten Hag was like, ta-da, there's the League Cup. Where'd you come in the league? Ninth. Yeah. People will lose their fucking minds. Yeah. If he comes fourth and wins nothing, they go, all right, well, what can you do next year? Yeah. Like, you've got to be realistic with this. All right, we're back in the Champions League. We came fourth. We won fuck all. Progress, right? Yeah. You win the League Cup and don't do any of the rest of that shit, you can get a fuck. We sacked Lou Van Gaal for winning the FA Cup. Yeah. So let's not pretend winning the League Cup would do bits. It wouldn't. And it also might not be possible to get past Burnley under the circumstances we find ourselves in when that game is being played. Yeah. We might you have bring your players. Old Trafford, there's a 20% chance you could play. And I'll be doing that. And I'll be doing that. And I insist that you do as well. Right, thank you for joining us, Steve. Manchester United have beaten Aston Villa 4-2, coming from behind twice to beat uh, Unai Emery's Villa. Uh, we're through to the next round to play Burnley. Hit subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you very much for joining us. And we'll see you in a bit. <laughs>